Jason here with me on a beautiful day. Hashtag Team All Blade and hashtag No Blade Left Behind. Come on in, throw me a subie smile, and all I gotta say is squad goals. Thank you for being here, for clicking in today's video, and for joining me. Hopefully, wherever you're watching from, you're drinking something delicious, you're sitting in a comfy chair, and you're ready for a shave. You know why? Today's gonna be absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited to be doing it. We're gonna be talking about the brand new scent releasing from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrement. That's right, Doug, Hux, and friends sent this our way. Just huge shout out and massive thanks to them. We've got it in hand. We've got Bay Gum on deck today. That's right. It's a brand new scent. It's um, just barely releasing from them to the mass public, right? This is a scent that they released earlier this year in their calendar advent. And I'm really excited that uh, it's going to be more readily available. They're releasing this for the Phoenix uh, meetup that's going to be happening on Saturday. I absolutely cannot wait to hear other people's thoughts on this. This is based around Juicy Fruit. It's a, a very, very, very popular 130-year-old um, gum, right? We all know it. We've all chewed it at least one point in our life. Juicy Fruit. And then they has gone in and mixed that with some other things. We're going to talk about it today. It's like a bay rum mixed with um, Juicy Fruit. Really interesting. That's right. Another candy scent from Doug. I'm really excited. Again, massive thanks and huge shout out to them for allowing us to do a spotlight and kind of a showcase. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. We're going to be using and highlighting some Something I'm really excited about. I've been waiting about two or three months to talk about this. We've got the VC2. It's actually using a ball end handle, but this is technically a, a VC2. I ordered it with a, a other handle. It came with the other handle, but because my ball end fit, I switched it over. So it's we're, today we're using like a Frankenstein, totally 100% valet razor from 1927 approximately to 1937. I really, really like this razor a lot. It's one of those razors that got me super interested in single edge razors because of how unique and steampunk it is, right? It's got the gears. It's got like the little lever mechanism. Everything about this, the flap that opens and closes. I like that each different iteration of the Valley Razors is different, right? All of them, they, they function differently, right? You got one where you slide the blade in uh, on, on the top of the flap. You got another one where you're clamping the blade in with these little wings. And then you got this one where you, the actual blade clamps in with a door. I like all of the different Valley ra Razors. I do not have the third one. I want to call that out. I have yeah, one, two, uh, missing three, and I have four. Um, uh, but I really, really have enjoyed the, the Valley line of razors. And today we're going to be doing it with the Subi Hack. I'm really excited. That's what I wanted. That's part of the reason I'm so excited to talk about it. We're going to be using a full spined gem blade in the Valet razor. Um, usually these razors used that Valet blades, right? They were a primary um, pr a proprietary blade for Valet. But then now people are using the FHH blades in them. Um, th I don't love the FHH blades. I'd rather use the gem blades. For anybody that's just tuning in, has never really paid that much attention to single edge razors, they look like a paint scraper blade, but they're designed for shaving. There are three facet designed for shaving um, razor blade that fits these razors with some modifications. Now, most razors have these little nubs, and I, I tried to show this in the loading video. I'm just going to get right into it today. We're just jumping right in. You'll see they have these little nubs. You see these nubs right here? That makes it so that the blade, when you set it in place, that was actually primarily made for the razor, right? That it sets with the right exposure and that it's held nice and secure. The problem is they stamp each razor a little differently. They all had different um, stamps. It's very interesting. They actually had several different stamps that um, created these nubs and they're made out of brass. And the problem is with brass is it's so soft. And these razors, right, at 1930, or, uh, uh, yeah, 1930 razors, the brass is kind of worn away. And in this case, it was completely gone. So the razor blade just sits nice and flush and level. So I just stuck the gem blade in there and loaded it and it, it loads perfect. So if you order one of these and it doesn't have nubs, guess what? It will fit a gem blade spined. No problems and no issues. And you'll actually see here, I have a little less exposure. The blade should go straight to the bar but mine doesn't. And the reason why is because I am able to back mine off just a little bit because there's no blade nubs to hold it right in place, right at the perfect exposure, which I actually prefer. I think the razor for me was actually a little overly aggressive at the maximum exposure, but I like being able to adjust that exposure just a little bit back, get a really smooth, very elegant, more like the VC4 shave, but with the VC2 performance. Really, really excited to talk today about it. It's one of those razors for me that has performed really well. And it's been like a razor that it's just so interesting 
interesting and unique that it makes me want to pick it up like really routinely. Uh, it's an awesome razor, and I hope today the, the um, hack and the Subi workaround is to get you as excited as it gets me. Oh, it's going to be phenomenal. Let's get in here and talk about Baygum. Uh, talking about phenomenal, right? I love this. I love seeing that Doug is releasing another candy scent, and I did do this for everybody out there that is curious. I made sure to grab clown fruit, right? That's the other one that for me smells like kind of like, like a, you're sticking your head in a, um, in a pillowcase and I have not done this yet. I've wanted to do this. I want to do it with everybody here. I'm going to, we're going to try both out and see which one smells like what, you know what I mean? So this is the clown fruit scent, right? You can see I've used a lot of it. It is another, like it has a bay rum scent back note where it also has candy. Yes. Like absinthe sweet notes. Like for me, like I said, it's kind of like a, like a, a, a whole smorgasbord, right? A smorgasbord of candy. It's got like Pez. It's got like the, those like penny candies that you'd see in your um, pillowcase as a kid when you're trick or treating. Switching it over to the juicy fruit scent, man, that is so interesting because you really do get like this very artificial. It doesn't smell like something that's growing, right? This smells man-made. It smells very sweet. It smells very, very like it makes my my, my jaw go like this. Like I want to be chewing something. It smells like gum. It does smell like gum. I originally, when I opened this up, thought it was bubblicious. I was like, is this but Because it's a smell as a kid, right? That I I would have recognized because it's something I used to use, especially as a kid. It smells very sweet. Like I said, it smells like candy. It smells like gum. I don't, there's the only way I know how to put it, but there's a spicy note at the back of it that gives it like a, a little bit more backbone, gives it a little bit more uniqueness. I want to call this out. Dave Johnson of the Frag Bros is the person that actually came to Doug with the concept. He was chewing juicy fruit wearing Atomic Bay Age rum and said, hey, I think this works. It smells really interesting. I think we could do a scent with this. And he's a guy that likes really high-end scents, likes really, really, really expensive stuff, right? So for him to say, I think the scent works and that he was wearing Bay Age, um, Bay, uh, Age rum, I think it really says something about what Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements is doing and what they produce, right? Really interesting, I, I just fantastic. Um, and for me, it's like a cheat code. And the lather, like I said, cheat code-esque. Look at this stuff. And that's after I've already lathered up my dome. I want to call this out. My lather is very hydrated today. Take a look. I, that's not for everybody. I, I know some people like to run theirs a little bit thicker. Uh, the, 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 the nice thing about um, Phoenix Artisan is that it does everything, right? I love that you can go really, really, really heavy with the water and have a very slick, very shiny um, soap. But you can actually run a little denser and it still performs really well for me and doesn't give you like the clogging, but it gives you a nice, smooth performance. I like their soap a lot. I can't say enough about their soap. CK6, it is like the shaving cheat code. At least it was for me, especially early on when I was trying to learn how to dial in my water to a soap lather, right? It, for their soap, it just really sucks up a lot of water. So even if you kind of over water, it really does well. Let's get in to do some shaving and I'll show you how well it does. Oh, I'm really excited again. 48 hours of stubble. I kind of feel bad busting out the VC2, the VB2, however you want to call it, this, this uh, Frankenstein razor, because I feel like it actually operates better with a lot of stubble, right? I Like 48 hours is just, it's not quite enough to really showcase how good the razor performs. Take a look here. It is so smooth. It is so much fun to use. This is one of those razors when you first pick it up, People will, if somebody else watches you wet shave or um, if somebody manages to catch you with your razor in your hand, they're going to be very confused because it looks so different than anything else out there, right? It does not look like your standard safety razor at all. And I like it for that reason. It almost feels like it's a mechanical razor, right? Like it should just be running like with a little locomotive engine back there um, running this little wheel system. I like it a lot. It's a fun razor to pick up. Um, they are, I want to call this out, pretty efficient razors. They definitely have some blade fill. My neck likes these razors because I can do just pretty much a single pass like I showed in the video today and get a very irritation free, very close shave. I think they're fun razors to photograph. To be honest, I really enjoyed the photographs that we did um, with the razor, with side by side bay rum or bay gum, excuse me, I bay rum. I just think that the pictures really um, popped and they really looked nice um, aside the razor um, because it, like Doug's um, style like with this um, label almost feels a little like like older, right? To me, it just feels like it's something from the, like the thirties, right? And I like that he mentioned um, that uh, the um, gum itself has been around for 130 years. So I liked using a razor that has also seen a lot of time. I, it's really cool to me. I think it's a fun razor to pick up, especially because of the history of it. I, I like the, um, the fact that we're using kind of a little bit of modification to make the razor work. And for, like I said, for me, it's a razor that 
I, it doesn't get as much use as it should. It doesn't get as much use in my in my arsenal as it should. And I was really excited to get to pick it up today. Another thing I've had recently is probably five or six people come to me and say, hey, I have questions about the ballet razors. And they're actually going back watching videos I produced years ago, which makes me kind of chuckle. I go back and I watch them and I'm like, what are they asking me? What's the question? So I go back and rewatch the video. I'm like, wow, things have changed. Things have progressively, in my opinion, gotten better. They've gotten more smooth. I feel like I'm more comfortable and more confident on camera. And that's again, because so many of you come here, you provide your enthusiasm, you provide your support, and you really have encouraged me to continue. And I just want to thank everybody out there that has made this journey so much fun by sharing the shave, right? Showing up regardless of the razor I'm using and just enjoying a, a, a close BBS shave with me, even when I was still learning and kind of growing. And again, that's not ending. I am very proud and confident to say every single time we do this, I learn something new. <laughs> I'm trying every single time to produce something a little bit better than we did before. Talk about smooth. Oh my goodness. The scent on this is phenomenal. It really has like a fun, playful, kind of like childlike smell to it, right? It takes you right back. And I'm sure everybody out there has had very um, different memories with the scent. And for me, it's a very, very, um, it takes me back to when like, you know, I, I I didn't have money to chew anything else other than cheaper, like really sweet candy that as your gum, like as you start chewing it, it just dissipates, right? There's no scent, no taste left about 10 seconds in, right? It's it, but it goes away. And I liked it now with the scent, I actually can enjoy that fragrance and that, that kind of, um, that smell for like the full day, right? The, the scent on that with is going to project and it's actually going to last really cool concept. Huge shout out to Dave again for going out and for recommending it to Doug. It is awesome. It is really cool. And again, if you're a fan of clown fruit, I think this is one you're going to really enjoy. The only thing I don't love about this razor, I remember now why it doesn't get as much use. That head and that angle, really hard to do my, around my ears. It makes my um, right here a little bit more difficult to get into. I actually have to like tilt in and go right up. You see how I'm doing that? but it takes a little bit more effort. I definitely think it takes a little bit more effort, but when you get it to that right level and right against your ear, it is so smooth. It produces such a close, comfortable, uh, like really, really irritation-free shave because of how efficient it is. It's a razor that um, I was first introduced to by a good friend of mine named Pete. And he was the person that kind of said, hey, if you like this, try this and this and this. And from there, a single edge razor just kind of became something I was really um, excited about and, very, and I really enjoyed. Again, this is using those gem blades with kind of a workaround, kind of a hack. Um, and it's because the razor was it just really in like that, that plate was in really bad shape when I first got it, right? It didn't have the nubs. So it doesn't hold a blade secure. And I am able to adjust the, um, the aggressiveness and the efficiency of it because of that, right? I could actually go a little more aggressive and have done so. And I don't enjoy it any, I do not like it very much at all. I will be honest. I do not love that. But when I back the blade off just a little bit, just a hair, that is such a smooth shave. Very, very comfortable. Very easy. It does remind me a lot of the VC4 razor, but kind of with like, I don't know, a little bit more performance due to the open comb. It gives it a little bit more blade fill and a little bit better flow. Really awesome shave. Like, right? So close, so comfortable, and so easy. Again, with a razor that has stood the test of time. The Valet VC with the ball end handle, right? Modified to its extent. The, the, uh, in my opinion, the, one of the more fun single edge kind of steampunk esque razors. Awesome shave, really fun to use, really fun to photograph, and very, very enjoyable as far as the post shave performance. Really, really close. Let's get a little bit of the splash on here and see how we did. I know on the face, when I grab the splash, right, usually with these Bay Rum background scents, right, they have quite a bit of punch through, and I can feel them as I add, um, like, uh, like I, I, they have a little bit of kick to them. Is that kind of what I want to say? They have a little bit of kick usually, but when I did it today on the neck and on the face, my, there was no redness. There was not even a sting slightly. And that's how it's feeling on my head again. No redness, no sting, no irritation. That is a close, comfortable BBS shave. It's absolutely flawless. And again, we did that with the VB, 
with a, it's really a VC with a ball end handle razor, valet, and the beautiful bay gum, brand new scent from Phoenix Artisan coming out here shortly. Huge shout out again to Doug, Fran, and Hux for allowing us to do the spotlight, the review, and kind of the discussion on this. I think it's really fun, really playful, very energetic, young, and it just it takes me back. It's one of those fragrances. It's like a nostalgia thing. Really enjoyed this. Thank you all for being here. If you haven't, please go below, smash that sub button. I'd love to talk to you in the comments. And until I see y'all then, soups out.